so excited to get into this Navi versus Gambit matchup. My oh my, Hugo, we're here. We're in the playoffs. And CIS, they're in the playoffs as well. However, one of them has to make an exit today on the other set to continue. I love this story of CIS just t t turning on itself, essentially. And already, a bit of a monster play in from Gambit. That opening kill is going to go a long way in setting them up well to win this round. The Pistols not keen to rush in just yet. Now, make their presence known out through Monster, and they have dealt with Electronics. Suddenly, B looking like it's ripe for the taking for Gambit. Yeah, Na'Vi stacking, not stacking it outside of spawn, right? And look at Nafani, he's holding on a rotate. Simple as run. And even though he begins to walk, his footsteps will be heard. He's being baited in, into the fight. He's not going to check his corner, but Nafani doesn't take the shot, stalling it out until the last possible second. Four on two, almost insurmountable odds for Na'Vi to get back into this round. Boomich is being pressured, and they'll hunt him down. It's only perfecto. One on three, and he already wants to save his armor. Probably the right call, given the situation. And Gambit, off to a strong start. It is, it is the their map pick in the series, right? As Yanko put on the desk, both these teams banning their opponent's best map, which is also their perma. So this is going to be super exciting. This is going to be super interesting to see, you know, not only uh, can Gambit take their map pick, but Na'Vi, they've had their fair share of troubles on train as of late. Even last year, we saw some as well. So I, I'm wondering if that's going to come into play today, coming off the back of a, a big win streak for Na'Vi, 10 matches in a row before Liquid uh, finally put that to rest. Na'Vi want to get back on the board. And I gotta say, right? I think uh, I think the overpass pick is is very very strong for this Gambit squad, right? It's a map that we know they fare well on, and it's one that Na'Vi struggle on a hell of a lot, right? And, it, and it's a bit of a weird one because it used to be a good map for the uh, the Na'Vi of old. Oh. Simple, getting stuck in with that scout opens up this four spike and sets you off on a five on four if you're Na'Vi. Gambit, keen to trade that back, but nothing's going to present itself here, to, at least over towards the A-bomb site. And so this might mean their hands feel kind of tied here as they start to go back through T-spawn, looking for an equalizer down on lower. Yeah, one thing that makes this super exciting is, is after the four-day break coming into playoffs, right? We, we talk about teams anti-stratting, we talk about teams watching their opponents' demos, knowing what maps are going to come through. Well, this isn't a map Na'Vi have even been playing as of late, right? They played it once this tournament, they lost it to Liquid after a near massive comeback on, uh, on that second half. So it's not like Gambit are really going to be looking at Na'Vi and, and going through demos and saying, oh, this is what they do. Because on the Na'Vi side of things, well, there's not that much, you know, data to pour through. So Gambit, very much focusing on their own game, I imagine, in this opening map. But that's what's got them here, and it's what's going to get them into this B site. So you hope. Perfecto holding with one. Inter is trying to trade, but Na'Vi aren't giving away the picks. Finally, Hobbit finds something, but Boomich down the connector with a lot of damage that might get finished off by the HE. It goes far, and Boomich backs up, knowing Gambit aren't committing into that B site, which is stacked. And right now, Gambit, I mean, this is uh, a very, very sticky situation to be in. No health, no control, 20 seconds, the save is the right call. Yeah, and a, but, but, but a horrible call to have to make. You know, you go into that wanting to, to build this momentum up early on, and it's just like right away, as soon as you step out of spawn, things are off the rails for you. Uh -oh. Boomich is even hunting down <laughs> these saving players, and if he even gets away with one, it's going to be oh. devastating, but he doesn't look in the right corner. Hobbit... I'll hold on to the AK at least. The Galil kept in play as well. But yeah, man, no, that round must have just felt like it went from bad to worse, right? You lose a player early on to simple scout over in mid, that Shiro out of the round, and then you try to crunch in towards this B site and things just keep getting worse and worse by the kill. Uh, and you're not able to trade it at any point. So yeah, bit of a rough one for Gambit. They keep these weapons in play at least. RV, very happy with a victory like that, knowing now that they're in a position to springboard themselves into an early lead. Yeah, winning that force is so profitable as well. Na'Vi bailed themselves out of having to, to hard eco for a couple of rounds and then get guns in the fourth. It's not exactly running AWPs in round number three, but simple and the scout might just be as deadly. And an equal pair of rifles on either side. Boomich holding a gap in the toilet. He sees one and he gives it up. Arvi just playing for that information early. Simple doing the same with the scout, watching for that short control. No one looking at long, but Boomich has it on a timing, and he'll swap sides with Simple. Doesn't want to be caught out in the open and get walked up on the toilet. That's, in fact, exactly what's happening, and Na'Vi don't know it until it's already too late. 
Oh, regardless, Simple is just nailing these scout shots. Boomage. Oh, no. oh the flash kind of helps him. They don't check oh. for it. Oh, Boomage, a third of the round. And there it is, the lock-in, the flash man. It, it left Boomage blind, but instead of, like, spamming out of panic, he just he just waits. He just waits <laughs> while he's flashed. And the fact that he hasn't opened up, he hasn't, like, fired any shots, means that they don't check him. They're like, well, we're not dead from long, so long's clear. And Boomich is allowed to get away with three as a result. That's a bit of a, a rough situation for Gambit. The turn on Axai yeah. as well. How does he get away with a third? Oh, filthy scenes. And yeah, that was a nice contact play from Gambit. Navi actually had no information, they had no knowledge those T's were even so close and uh, and out of nowhere, a flash that could have just rendered Boomich dead and given a bomb plant to Gambit, right? That that one kill that needs to come through makes all the difference in that round. It would have been a plant with Gambit with AKs in the toilets, but no, denied by the Boomich. And now it's a Felico. Now Gambit go, all right, let's level our money out. Let's start to build it up. Navi, on the other hand, are well armed. Gambit aren't being given anything yet again. Down in Connector is simple with the SMG. He can find timings, he can aggress, he can catch Gambit moving up A short. Or he can just sit back and wait. There's the footsteps getting heard on A, and Simple, of course, hits the perfect timing. No one watching for him. This should be a freebie. Hobbit's out of the picture, and Boomich flashed again, although when has that, has that ever put a stop to him, especially with Electronic side-by-side, -side, and Boomich cleans up three once again. Good looking for Boomich to start yeah, this map. Yeah, uh, You know, another thing that I think is pretty exciting is, like, in that Liquid game, if you remember that Na'Vi Liquid game that rounds things out, where, where Liquid looked really, yeah. really good, Simple was pretty quiet in that game. I think it was one of his quietest maps in the event so far because other than that he's been fairly lights out and i was hoping that that would really you know like push simple to bring his a game into these playoffs as though he wasn't going to anyway right yeah but uh, having this little break beforehand for teams to get ready for everyone to get their heads put together i think it's going to produce some really high level scenes and i already love what we're seeing out of guys like simple like boomage it is very very exciting gambit now in with the investment right orp on shiro Rifles out for everyone else. Still a lot of Galils in play to facilitate utility in a round like this. So let's see if that comes back to punish Gambit at all. Oh. It should be all right. The oh. run boost to get Shiro over <laughs> and simple. Plugs him out of thin air. Man advantage taken. And Na'Vi sat five on four again with the kill going untraded. An audacious peak, we'll call it there for Shiro. And I like to try, right? Definitely gets a rifle that's going to catch him off guard. But simple sniping him down and three on this a site now if you have no fear we're, we're playing lax on b they're even drawing a, th a fourth rotation in in the form of flamey what a ballsy call they don't even have any information they're just guessing and they've guessed correctly boomage aggressing along will he receive a flash no need he catches inters swip, uh, swapping between nades bomb at his feet and this is just all too easy for Narvi right now axile giving it a go but it's too little too late boomage with three again that's three rounds in a row with triple kills from Boomich leading by example. I love it. I love what we're seeing out of Boomich right now. You know, like this is this is the Navi you wanted to see when you hit playoffs, right? This is them coming alive again. This is the the defending champions of Karavitsa. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. Bit of a rough round for Shiro, right? Especially yeah. when you think about how much focus there's been on this guy. It was exciting to see him bring that AWP out. And you were wondering, well, what's he gonna get done with it? Well, run boosted to his death, ultimately, is his fate over towards Longside. But, you know, that being said, we definitely need to keep our eyes on Shiro in this series. He has been one of the top performers in almost all stat lines, all stat lines coming into this uh, this playoff match. The amount of well. clutches he has had is just unreal. Like clutches, ADR, orb kills per round, kills per round. I mean, he's been up there in almost every capacity. Safe to say Gamma have played a lot of maps in this tournament. But even so, for such a young team, formerly known as the Youngsters was this Gambit roster. Well, now they're the big boys and they're here in the playoffs up against Na'Vi. Easier said than done. And every round, Gambit have had to use a smoke to extinguish that Molotov. The one round they don't buy it is this eco. And look at the ground Na'Vi have gained as a result. Boomish has pushed all the way through middle to play party and Gambit can't even touch mid. Oh, Hobbit getting wall banged. I really, I really like to believe, based on what we're seeing from Na'Vi here, that they went away and they've taken a look at Overpass over these last few days because it has been, you know, pretty consistently one of the one of the maps that makes them look very, very beatable. 
Uh, and it used to be a map they were good on. And like already you're noting a lot of changes here, right? You've got Boomich and Simple playing over towards this A bomb site. Well, Electronic actually used to be the guy that used to attempt these like long pushes a lot on the CT side. Instead, he's normally found, you know, playing this kind of rotation swing Ooh. role. And even though Inters is getting away with that 1D, that's the extent of this round for Gambit. So Na'Vi are already approaching this like differently to what we've seen in the past. And it's already looking a lot more put together than what we've seen in the past. That's scary in my eyes. Because like this is the one map that I think a lot of teams have been able to look at and go, yeah, we can get them to look vulnerable there as long as we're good at it. And so if they have dedicated some time into fixing their overpass, ooh-wee, Na'Vi. They just got that much more excited. Yeah, one thing that's scary for Gambit as well is the money is starting to build out of control, right? Once you get these orbs around on the CT side, once you start getting your money in your pocket, you can be a terrifying team uh, on this CT half. Simple's always holding for the, the five stack boost. He regularly plucks people out of the air with M4s, not just orbs as well, but Gambit aren't giving it a go. Safe to say, not Navi are not the team you should ever pull that boost against because I've seen Simple kill that, that top player far too many times. But yeah, Gambit need back-to-back -back rifle rounds and then some to break this money of Na'Vi. And it's easier said than done. Simple with another finding the opener out towards B. And now we can just float. We know what Simple likes to do on all CT sides. Stay very mobile, stay very active, show the AWP on one side of the map, and then rotate out. That's exactly what he's doing. Boomish with a backstab at Shiro comes in behind on long, and Boomish is looking the wrong way. It's about time he was put down. Simple. Oh, very close. <laughs> Oh no, there we go. Nafani in with that opener. And now that you know that you've dealt with Simple, this A site just got that much more tempting. Flamey is found in rotation and they know that Electronic is here trying to make his last stand behind the truck. Electronic, they're all over him and Hobbit's going to get the kill. Bomb now down and Perfecto coming in on this late lurk. But this is someone else who's been good in clutches, right? Perfecto versus Shiro, going to go head to head. Inters as well, holding over here towards the long side. Doesn't want to give this kill away. As Perfecto is now picking up a bit of steam in towards Long. Sneaking up with the Org out. Bomb timer ticking against oh, no. it. Perfecto, he's seen the barrel, he's seen the peak, and now he's in with the swing. Shiro left in another one of these clutches, and he's so damn reliable in them. A nice try from Perfecto to get that from a 1v3 to a 1v1, but you ain't getting past Shiro in those situations. Yeah, very risky play for Shiro, right? After the barrel gets spotted, he just swaps out to the AK and takes the fight head up, right? Could have played the bomb, could have played the time, but the confidence is there for Gambit, which is something good, right? You do, you do want them believing that they can take down Na'Vi in this series. And for Na'Vi, you know, they've, they've got to battle through CIS teams all the way to the grand final if that's where they want to go, if they want to repeat their Katavita of last year. Spirit and Gambit both in the way. Nades being set up outside of B. No one on the boost. Electronic is passive enough that he will avoid significant damage, and in fact, any at all. And then jumps up after the boost, because why would they do it twice? Simple back up to his usual tricks and Na'Vi playing four out of B. Uh, this doesn't have to remain for long, right? Gambit are on a standard default. They're split up. Bomb is outside this B site, so we might see this being the late round play. But they at least want to show some presence in mid. Because as far as Gambit are aware right now, everywhere they've gone, there's been three, if not more, Na'Vi players waiting. Some of that being gambles, but a lot of it just being, you know, the, the quiet on the other side of the map. If no one's peeking, no one's shooting outside of B, well, why would Na'Vi not put players on that top side, especially with the info we're seeing them gain? Jump spotting on short, etc. Right now, it's only Boomich here still calling for help. Electronic is moving on up, but this is a good ruse caused by Gambit, right? The bomb's going back, and even though Inters has no more utility, as long as he shows face first, he can try and keep these two players here from Na'Vi. Oh, Boomish has called for a third man to rotate up to A. And that bomb is now back outside of B along with the rest of the team. Only Inter's up at the A bomb site selling that fake. And so Perfecto and Simple have got to do a hell of a lot with very little. It's Simple plucking Hobbit out of the air. That's going to go a long way. Even though Inter's opens up on a Boomich, this is where Na'Vi starts to rotate. There's 10 seconds and it's only Perfecto and Simple oh. still down at B, but they're getting all the kills. It might not even matter for Shiro. He's got to back out and save. He can't get past the two players in the site. And Inter's even risks going down after time. Na'Vi, they will show mercy to the Gambit squad as they let them both survive. They could have tried to be more punishing there, but Electronic is just focused on their money and building up money for Na'Vi. 
Yeah, and honestly, like Gambit saving guns there isn't, you know, best case scenario by any means. It's going to force them to reinvest around it, but it won't be a pretty buy, right? More Galils, lack of utility, and right now we're seeing the struggles of that lack of util, unable to, to draw any fakes, even though Inter sells it pretty well on A, getting that kill up short with 20 seconds left. It just wasn't fine for Gambit to rotate the bomb. If the bomb was on A, they would have had a part for free. Instead, they're forced running into B, up against the clock. And Boomer's just had enough, by the way. He's really just done with waiting around. It's going to push all the way in through middle. Na'Vi can start to rotate down. They've still got a heavy top side setup, and Simple's already begun doing that. Yeah, Flamey all the way over at long needs to get a move on. Oh. He realizes that as well, but the B site play is already in. So in spite of this information that Boomich gets, Na'Vi were a oh. long way away from rotating down, and Shiro even catches Boomich on that wrap round. This is likely just the save. It's a little bit upsetting for Na'Vi, right? They had all the information in that round. They knew exactly what was coming. But sadly, the uh, the rotates down to B just take too long. And so Gambit hit that perfect window where Na'Vi of three players pushed up on A and only a double B hold. So despite knowing it's B, that's only half the battle. And the rest of the battle happened down at that B bomb site with no one winning their fights. It is just the save and Gambit are on to another in this fairly, you know, lackluster buy round, you know, they didn't really have much utility, as you say, nothing to really make that work. So they're very content with this being their third that they're able to sneak past Na'Vi. Yeah, and, and that's good why they speed it up as well, right? Like you don't have the util to, to long out any kind of fake or or throw in, you know, double execute and wait for Na'Vi to drop their smokes and then reapply the pressure. You've just got to go. And considering how free B was, Shiro is aware that, oh wait, there's no one on this lower site. They're probably flanking. They're probably pushed deep mid. So he turns around and does deal with Boomich, who has been a bit of a beast already. So good spot for Shiro. As, as that kill, right, if, if Boomish takes down Shiro on the flank and then comes in onto B, it's suddenly a winnable round for Na'Vi. They can play slow on that retake. And yeah, Gamut Na'Vi, they've been facing an RMR events throughout this year, as we saw back in New York. But even, even before that as well, back at We Play Clutch Island, it was, you know, Gambit winning their opening game against Na'Vi. Na'Vi went on to not be happy with that result and didn't drop a single series, even beating Gambit again in the tournament. So they've had their trouble against CIS teams, but Na'Vi are back with a vengeance and Gambit are back to B. Oh, but this time Flamey is holding on to Monster and he doesn't let them get out. It's all grinded to a bit of an uncomfortable halt here for Gambit. They were hoping that this B site was the answer to their problems and Flamey has instead presented a hell of a lot more. Inters and Shiro still left standing at the very end of things, but Electronic to get past Simple rotating in as well, leaving Boomich up at A. Ooh. Missed shot for Simple. Now that gives you an opportunity in this round. A minute still left on the clock and a two on three. This is a round now you can think about attempting if you're Gambit. Flamey holding deep on the right-hand side. And he is still hearing these footsteps, still hearing that Gambit are lurking around outside of B. Intez needs to do a lot, though, to get away with an opening, and he's not going to. Flamey just pops his head off like it's nothing. And so now Shiro up through the short side, one versus three, to try and find. And even though he's been great in clutches, this one might be a little too far gone. Peeks out with the orb. First man down. Electronic going to offer himself up as well. And now just Flamey. They know where he is. Shiro. No. Oh, caught with the knife in hand, but still alive. Still a threat. And looking to add another clutch sure to the tally. Does. It's up towards the A-bomb site. So little time. But he will have enough to get that bomb down, perhaps, as he rotates on in. It's going to be close. He's there with a second left on the clock. Bomb now planted. And Flamey throwing into the 1v1 versus the clutch king of Gambit. What a cool man. You could see the, the team call it like, oh, that's not the monster player that killed me. There's one more. And he, he doubles back. He even considers just staying for the fight. But after getting tagged, Shiro has escaped. And he could be anywhere. Flamey knows it. Speed is his prerogative as he moves in quickly through the toilets. All the noise for Shiro in the world. And he posts up for the clutch. Gambit onto four. And that is not something you can rely on. But that is the star power of Shiro. Maybe you can rely on him. He's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, Shiro sees he's left in a 1v3 and he's like well these are the best odds i've had in years cracks his knuckles out time to shine boys oh shiro again another one of these clutches so good when it is just all eyes on him it feels like that pressure you know knowing that the odds are stacked against you that maybe navi are going to give you a few more fights than normal that is really where shiro thrives 
And that is a great skill to have, a great little secret weapon in your arsenal if you're Gambit. And honestly, when they were in that three on one, I was just about to compliment Navi on how reserved they were being, how they weren't peeking anything, how they weren't giving away the kills, right? Flamey waits for Inters to double flash monster before he even fights him. And they weren't giving Shiro the pick into B, but Boomage setting up a flash for the monster peak is the one to go down. Caught by Shiro, just peeking aggro short, and then it all just comes tumbling down for Navi. And remember that max money we were talking about, that 10k per player, no longer a factor. Na'Vi's money has been whittled down by back-to-back -back rounds, and now suddenly Gambit are in pole position to take this game back. They'll do it till it works, these B-Nades. Trying to get rid of Flamey, right? Same position as he was playing last round, but he's moved. Simple back to top and Gambit. Look how reserved, look how slow they are to approach this middle area. They do not want to get picked by the Orb with no say in the matter. Fast out long for Inters. Oh, he hasn't been spotted. Boom is just jumping. Will he be caught out off guard? No, he gets the info that time around and gives it up. No need to commit to the fight. We'll just post on the corner and we already have another rotate coming up. Flamey and electronic four on eight so navi again setting up with a lax b hold that's exactly where gambit aimed to go if navi lose their one player perfector with no kill does that just force the save that's the danger of this setup it's a big call that navi have to make but they're still hoping it's a that is not the case yeah electronic is re-aggressing in through the toilets right trying to get this information ahead of time once again, Gambit have this little window where this B site, man, all it takes is the one kill to come in on Perfecto and the round is won. The round is theirs. Oh, Double molly to force out. Perfecto off of the angle. And already this is not looking like a pretty uh, pretty round if you're Na'Vi. I'll hang about. They'll see if they can get anything to propel them into this retake. But if nothing presents itself soon, yeah, it will just be this save called in. Yeah, these are like identical rounds from Gambit as well, where Inters is just hiding, you know, towards toilets, towards parties at different positions. And he waits for Na'Vi to re-aggress. And when he gets that kill, Na'Vi, all that does is convince them that they're right. You're like, yeah, we're four on A for a reason. They're here. That's not the case. Gambit just storm into B. And yeah, the, the format A7 is nice, right? Even if Electronic gets a kill, it's information. But at that point, we saw that same result for Boomage when he pushed mid on the B play and they had solo B. Gambit take it. Boomage may come in on this big flank, but Gambit are already way further than Na'Vi were ready for. And this round is no exception. It's not a bad round for Na'Vi, because considering the money, right? They can actually just reinvest. They lose one gun and they go, yeah, fine. We'll save, we'll buy up next. Alternatively, that would have been an eco for Navi or a force buy at best. So yeah, it gives you back-to-back -back gun rounds. It's a big risk, but here's the here's the investment for Navi. And now they've got to make it worthwhile because an eco is looming on the horizon. Yeah, simple this time around is looking to take a gunfight early on over here in middle. And I like this, you know, Simple's been pretty restrained thus far. You know, he's been pretty slow in terms of uh, looking for these openers and instead is elected to to play down towards that B site a hell of a lot. So this time, this all posted up in middle. Maybe that's something that could catch Gambit off guard. One Simple, oh, oh it's only the tag. Once he's got the attention, that gives Boomich down here in Connector a lot more room because now Gambit are invested in this A bomb site. But timing is everything for Boomich. And that second player late out through mid is good for the trade. This might be another save, honestly. You're three on four. The bomb's already going down inside of A. And so this is a rough round to grind your way back into if you're Na'Vi. The nade finds good damage onto Hobbit, but that's not really something you're looking at as like a, a big win for Na'Vi. Without a kill presenting itself, they will start to seep their way through. They've dealt with Hobbit on the entry, and now they're interested. But half the time ticked off for this bomb. Na'Vi have got to go fast, and they've got to get past Inters in the site. There he is dropped. Shiro removed as well now, and Axile throwing oh. in to a 1v2 clutch that he doesn't want to be in. He didn't sign up for this. Tapping that smoke. He can't get them off the bomb. They're sticking it. The shots are missing, and there's the defuse for Na'Vi. They stick it out. He will survive with the AWP at least but it's still a 3v4 retake that shapes up for Na'Vi. Yeah, it's kind of funny because due to how fast that round is, right, both teams have 
you know, like far too much utility or far more than you can account for on a typical retake or site take gambit they they set up the a execute and then they just cycle smokes in it like you said it looked like the save it looked like navi realized this one's undoable but gambit were actually giving navi the room to run through those smokes hobbit gets mollied the flamey drops a smoke on the bomb you know gambit uh, just get flushed out of the bomb site and navi in for another round out of nowhere definitely a surprising one that smoke bounces over the molotov for exile and so it doesn't put out the short molly navi now know that gambit are not there but they do hear the smoke bloom look how deep it got that is very weird navi now have water control that's a big bit of information simple along with the orb swap side to boomage this time around but there's a gap in the smoke and boomage is looking to exploit it may have just missed the timing but gambit have been really good at getting these contact day plays in right getting super deep in the toilets before navi even know where they are however that won't be the case today boomish is here to play he's here with a pixel angle and gambit is throwing utility to give away their play boomish does he get cleared oh no one's looking this way now he's given up the aim of the game though and so shiro will trade that out with no one coming up through long simple has been given a lot of room to work with and there is the first four simple smoke now down to cover his retreat so he can't get just mopped up by a late long player and axile is moving in through this position he also knows he's dropped the bomb so the rotations are already here for navi damn but how on earth are they meant to recover this when this smoke fades if they hit the timing to deal with simple on this long play oh. that's going to be worth its weight in gold because now a three on three given over gotten rid of the heavy hitter and they're now moving into this site wind in their sails the late flank up through oh. con could decide a hell of a lot flamey denies that bomb plant and with only 15 seconds left that could be the round shaping up for navi it's down to the clutch again for shiro very little time to work with and a bomb plant over at the truck at least keeps him safe from flaby is this where shiro puts another clutch up on the tally down into the bank but flamey's not looking to withdraw instead moving in up past the flower bed shiro still just patient as ever i'm planted for him as well a really rough spot for flamey Smoke is wide as well. That's a little bit devastating. He can't even just stick the defuse. Oh. He will win it out on the cross. So the clutch is denied. Oh, doesn't have a kit. He's got it. He's got it. That's really, really good. Like, you know, play for flame. Oh, wait. Ooh. No, not even close. Oh, dear. I told you, Hugo. I told you. I didn't <laughs> want to say it. But what, what, what else can you say, man? Shiro, Clutch King, we all knew he had it. There was never even a moment of doubt, in spite of what many may say. Oh. I don't know who's hurt more by that, me or Flamey. That one is unthinkable. There's no kit on the site. There's no way for Flamey to get that defuse off faster. He gets stuck on the truck. I was just about to credit him on, on like, that's experience shining through for Flamey, right? Drops the smoke, he waits, he waits, he waits, he gets nothing, and then he reads that bank cross position, just nails Shiro to the wall, but it doesn't matter. And Gambit, they sneak it past the keeper. They're sneaking into B. These guys are full of surprises, and Navi are not ready for the pace set out. Nafani running them down, and they're looking the wrong way. Sprayed by the Max 10, and this is a cleanup round for Gambit, right? Get some confidence back, get a seventh round, because Navi have no money to contest. Oh boy, still reeling from that clutch. Shiro, yet to lose one in this map. And this Gambit team, they are giving it to Na'Vi right now. They are sending them a message and it's not a warm welcome. See, now that's an impressive yeah. stat. 42 and 13 in opening duels at the event, six and one right now. And he's even been dropped an AWP across by Perfecto to once again try and provide these openers for Na'Vi. <laughs> Holding for the boost, but he's not going to get given it today. This is it. Like winning the winning the half on T side would be very impressive for Gambit. We know Na'Vi can pull these comebacks for sure. They did it against Liquid after 10-5. It did fall in round 30, but they at least made it close. They at least contested it. Right now, Gambit, this is quite the recovery arc. Boomich spotting along again, playing things safe. 
And I gotta say, in that previous round on the A site, Gambit, really good problem solving to get rid of Simple, right? When they lose the bomb on A and they realize Simple's trapped along, they just hold off. They just reset and wait for Axel to, to go and wait that smoke out on long. Simple can't escape because he's trapped by the Orc towards flower beds. And well, he's not ready for the fade. Axel's sitting inside of it on the long position. So Gambit have had really, really good calling in this game for such a yeah, I hate the word inexperienced in in an example like this because they do have experience, but you know, in comparison to a team like Na'Vi, certainly impressive. In terms with an opener, he's been very good at finding these lurk kills on that top site while Gambit push the issue down on B, and that is again going to be the case. Flamey can drop this smoke. Na'Vi do love it. Perfecto's been flashed out. That'll try and buy them some room, but right through the smoke go Gambit until Hobbit gets flashed out, and Axel goes above to try and hunt these players in the pit. He's got them. Is he ready for Perfecto? This cover as the bomb plant does not get denied. It's only simple in the clutch. Yeah, and with how deep Gambit are at B, this might be a bit of a rough one for Simple. He's trying to get round them. Hobbit, Axile, and the AWP all posted up on Simple. And so there's Shiro to lock in the 8 7 half for Gambit. They're in the lead. This was after Na'Vi were up 6 to 2. Yet somehow now, Gambit are the ones leading the charge moving into this second half. Hobbit, thank you so much for joining me. You're facing Na'Vi today. So we're definitely going to have a CIS team in the finals because we've got Gambit, Na'Vi and Spirit all on your side of the playoffs bracket. Why do you think the CIS region has been so strong here in Katowice? <laughs> the first of all, in my opinion, because of online. And online, a lot of players playing uh, with a huge confidence. So that's the main um, reason, in my opinion. The second thing, uh, CIS region is playing a lot. If you're going to see FPL games, uh, like um, every second or third game, uh, eight or seven people uh, who is playing uh, from CIS. So usually when I'm playing FPL, I'm I'm communicating in Russian because I have a full CIS team. <laughs> so I think it's the second second reason. Third re reason is uh, I think uh, time just came to rise and to show ourselves. Yeah. You haven't played against Na'Vi so far this year. Last time you faced them was Autumn and you lost. And now they are looking like the ones to be in this tournament. How do you feel about going up against them in this quarterfinal? Um, it's not going to be easy for sure. For uh, for Na'Vi and for us, we're going to fight, we're going to do some damage and uh, we will show our like spirit, you know, for sure. But um, it's gonna be hard because they have um, like um, good, uh, I don't know, good shape. They're the number one team right now. They have everything to win this uh, tournament, but we will try to stop them. Yeah. How is the best way to stop Na'Vi? <laughs> no, no fear and play. <laughs> Hobbit, thank you so much. Good luck in the quarterfinals of I Am Katowice and congratulations on making the playoffs. Thank you very much.
Gambit. They've got an ace up their sleeve. They've got a Shiro in the source, and they've got a leading half on overpass T side. It's looking good right now for the Gambit boys, the youngsters that were up against the titans of CIS in Natus Vincia. But if there's one thing we know about Na'Vi, you should never, ever take your eyes off the prize. These guys are not going to fall asleep at the halftime. Instead, coming back in with a strong T-side pistol would be the answer for Na'Vi to solve all their problems. Simple with a P250 dropped on over and a good bit of util to get things going for this T-side. Yeah, Gambit running the uh, old faithful one peaking mid, four down towards B. However, Axile, he... Uh, he forgets the number one rule, and that's, you know, if you overpeak in middle, suddenly this entire map goes dark. And and now for Gambi, you know, already finding themselves in a four on five. Well, they have to dis disassemble that four man B stack immediately. They rotate two players up to A. And this is where if you're an RV now, you, you don't have to go fast at all. Like, you've got plenty of time. You've got all the room in the world. You know that Gambit are going to be shuffling players around between either bomb site, And ultimately, Na'Vi looking like they want to lean in towards B, already rotating that bomb down on the back of Electronic. Simple, given this P250 armor buy. I think the best thing you could do in a pistol round is give a P250 over to a guy like Simple. I mean, look at how much of a difference it makes in those mid fights. Actually, has a longer range on it than the USP with one taps. And so now... This B play moving in, Shiro well light up with the first, but immediately traded by that simple P250, and Inters is caught out as well. Simple, in with the third, Nafani dropped from the round, leaves it all on Hobbit. Now, is Hobbit able to pull his Shiro out of this one? I don't know, I don't think so. Not with so many players in position. He does deal with Simple, but up in heaven with the crossfire set up. Between him and Electronic, this should be the done deal. Hobbit has seen the man in heaven. Oh. Time is starting to become the problem. Taps out electronic. The bomb planted out in the open, and Hobbit's just sticking it. Surely don't get away with the full 10 second stick. Perfecto. It's not clean. You know, no one's like, yeah, that was a sick kill. But he does get it locked in, and that's the most important yeah. thing. Eight to eight for Navi. Pistol round going their way. And one thing I did want to say after that first half, I think while Shiro has taken a lot of the attention, right, for the clutches he's been able to deliver, uh, which. You know, very, very valuable. I'm also looking at Inters as kind of an unsung hero in that one there. In that first half, he was so good at always selling these fakes. He was like the master decoy yeah. in his team. Like he'd always get you a kill over towards A and force rotations. Now, moving into their CT side, I'm wondering what we're able to get out of him now that those same kind of, you know, fake possibilities aren't a factor. Kit was dropped in heaven on that retake as well. Hobbit, right? Like, there's not many plays he can make there that are, that are, that are going to work unless Perfect over peaks. But, oh, nice stuff for Shiro with the one Famas in this round. Simple's got a Krieg for crying out loud. And Electronic's getting pushed up close by two through the Molotov with no damage received. Shiro, he can upgrade or downgrade if you think that way. It's a Galil versus Famas battle. But instead, he could just arm his teammate once the Molly is dispersed. Simple's moving up into A. He could get caught looking at toilet. Instead, flicks back to long. Still a man in the same position. Afani's just re aggress and push behind default. So Navi don't have that info just yet, but a Molly comes down and Nafani's got to move into a fight. Simple is eagerly waiting for that. Now a third player, and they're just 1v1ing Simple. Those are not the engagements you want to give this man as he is picking up kills left and right. Two CTs here, and the flank timing is important for Shiro. He could be left for the clutch, but no kit in this round. Gamma need to hold something down, and Hobbit's done at least one. He surely can't double up here, though, as Flamey chases him, and Simple's ready for for Shiro, Na'Vi onto nine, and Simple bringing the Krieg better meta back into play. Three kills from it, and Na'Vi steal the lead right back. Here's a cool little stat line from Ezio, right? Uh, so Shiro got his 15th clutch of the event by winning that 1v2 in round 13. Yeah. And uh, the record is held by Simple from Star Ladder Season 4, where he got 19. Simple Whoa. did that in 27 maps. Shiro is on his 10th map of the what? event and is only four clutches behind the no. current record. So that's pretty mind blowing. Maybe Shiro can at least, uh, you know, break a record at a bare minimum. Who knows? If he yeah. keeps this up, he might be well on track. Maybe even in the series, Harry, up against Simple, stealing the crown off of the head of the king or the corpse of the king. We'll see if Navi take this series. Right now, things are looking good.
but I'm not counting anyone out in a regional bout between the best of CIS. It's Hobbit boosted towards Connector. Oh, he gets the dink, but Perfecto is very quick. And now he knows, right? Information, one second player there. The more that came from. Flash is coming from outside B, but no one's in a rush here for Na'Vi. Flamey's crept through Monster, and he's still going to check the boost. Good awareness. Two more CTs waiting in the wings, and in the tunnel is Nafani getting a dink to Boomish. Flamey backs up, but he just repeat from the site. Luckily, Simple does kill Nafani before he retreats. Now this round should be coming to a close, even with Shiro here on short. He gets jump shot, and bye-bye Gambit. Only an eco, right? It's what you can expect, but... Na'Vi beginning to flex on this T-side already. Now we've got the AWP out and the full buy for Gambit. Oh dear, I hope Nafani buys a kit. Because you wouldn't want that to be your undoing. It was for Flamey. And there it is. Phew. One kit. Na'Vi still running bonus as they build their money. And Simple's trying to be the man behind the dawning of the second Krieg yeah. meta. Krieg 2, Electric Boogaloo. Oh, Electronic does not fare well in that little spam battle down in the connector. No damage applied to the other side, whereas he's down to 63. And now these M4s get that much more deadly up against him as a result. They're going to hit like an AK. Navi aren't worried just yet. And with connector control, Navi now, you know, they're, they're made aware of this. that They have all this control down towards Con and Short. And so this opens up a lot of possibilities, right? You can go with an A fake. You can fake B and quick rotate up to A. Suddenly your options are open and Simple is trying to open them even more. The flash nice. is real good. That little bait, bait and switch between Axile and Shiro. That's the kind of stuff that snatches away at opening kill and Axile is even getting more aggressive on the back of it. Spots Electronic in the toilets. As mentioned, he was tagged up earlier on. And so that M4, all it takes is one to the dome. They're holding for the long push from Boomich and in the blink of an eye, it is all left on to Perfecto. This is a great first rifle round from Gambit, right? It's a bait and simple up for the short push, trying to deal with Shiro jump peeking in the site. Axile doubling up in the toilets. Now just left to this one man with the Krieg. And only seven seconds. Perfecto is looking to save. At least if he gets away with this, he can drop an AWP into play, right? Simple can then drop a gun to, uh, to Boomich, rather. Flamey can drop Electronic, and we're, and we're all good if you're Na'Vi for a buy. Yeah, I mean, it's actually kind of nice to not see you know, Gambit get given that Krieg. Maybe they don't take it, right? It, it, it depends on the player, I'd say. But getting a Krieg on CT side can be nasty with that scope. Very powerful weapon in the right hands, as, as simple as showing us right now. Uh, 10 to 9. At least trading rounds right now are Gambit, getting their first rifle round on the board. And yeah, good calls, right? Again, re-aggressing. They trade one for one at Monster. Flamey has been trying to get a lot of lurks out into that position, and it gets denied again. Even going one for one with a Mac 10 on your own is, is okay there. But oh, Axile, no fear on that re-aggression. Kill simple, goes back for more, dropping the bomb. And at that point, it feels like an unlosable round for Gambit, who have already locked down B with the smoke. So here we go, back into the fray. Back into the firing line. Simple, still creaking it up. Yeah, as mentioned, right, we had the money to get an AWP into the hands of Simple. So, interesting to see him still electing to go for the Krieg. Him and Boomich slowly but surely work in this mid position. They deep flash long to try and get an AWP off the angle, angle but it's Axile there. And so he'll just be uh, retreating back into this A bomb site. Navi, another one of these slow paced rounds. 
No information gained yet for Gambit, and Navi are leaning heavily down towards this B bomb site. Now, at this point in the round, this is normally where, right, when Gambit were running something similar to this, they might have gotten away with a kill over towards A. These were the kills that Inters was was great at picking up. Navi haven't applied that same pressure though, and so at this point in time, Gambit is still ha stacked fairly heavily down towards B. It will get dismantled on the opener by Simple and Flamey. And now there is only one man here, but more players are moving down in rotation. And at this point in time, Gambit actually outnumber Na'Vi inside the B bomb site. These other Na'Vi players still a little ways away from getting involved. And so as the kills are coming in, things are going from bad to worse. Na'Vi, they get the B control. But they don't have the numbers here to get that bomb down. So now they're having to rush down these defending players. They're having to pressure them. Simple will deliver that kill and be the oh, man to get dear. the bomb planted, but denied by Nafani. And now time is running out. The bomb's got to get planted, but they've gone for the kills instead. That is a disaster. There's no time for the bomb plant. And so Gambit get a 10th. Does that count, count as a Shiro clutch Absolutely. if he runs away? I think Absolutely. it does, right? Yeah, I mean, it's team play for sure. Nafani makes that call, right? He gets the spam off and he tells Shiro to run immediately. He knows he's going to get traded in the pit, but all he had to do was deny the plant. And as you say, Na'Vi focusing on kills over the bomb. Oh my, I mean, they go for it as quick as they can at that point. Someone had to kill Nafani. He couldn't have planted twice. He would have been denied again. And Shiro just sprints. He just escapes. And he adds a clutch to his tally. Oh dear, that's a kicker for Na'Vi. Like you said, right? Two players in the site for Na'Vi. Gambit had more manpower despite even being a man down. But it's yeah. Electronic hunting, jumping over the boxes. And he has no one there to trade him. Simple setting up utility for crying out loud. Smoking the site, mollying the pit. But all that does is trap Gambit into the position that the wind's in the round. Nafani had no need to move. And Gambit is still in this one, 10-10. That's one of the things that, that is so like, uh, was so different between the two sides. Like when Gambit were throwing in a fake, it was only inters over at A. Like one man makes a big difference. The fact that Na'Vi had two there meant that, you know, even if you get traded like one for one down on B or two for one, like what happened to Na'Vi, as you're moving in, you've only actually got two players in B. Like, you know, you've got the kills, you've been given the space, but there's a lot of room for Gambit to rotate down and be offered up a three versus two inside of that bomb site. So yeah, it's a little bit rough and you know you can't even look at electronic there and be like well he could have played it safer like no i think he knows that at that point in time with just the two of them there with the bomb in tow with 20 seconds he needs to get something else a little bit more yeah. from around like that and so he's feeling the pressure it falls apart for navi gambit now tie this game up yeah, there's some kickers of rounds lost by Na'Vi that they are going to be, you know, not happy about. But it's all about staying composed in these quarterfinals, keeping yourself together. Got a long day ahead of us. Simple getting run boosted. How into a long as Shiro tried in the first half, he was denied by Simple, but the Yorp is far more passive on A. And Gambit have three here as well, right? Similar to Na'Vi, not afraid to, to make the risky move of leaving B fairly under-defended. De uh, Very passive setup, and this MP9, you know, on the site, surely only playing for info here if you're inters. You can't really put a stop to anyone coming out through that position. Hobbit waiting on short. Bomb for Electronic there as well, but he's already peeling back, going up the stairwell as Flamey gets out Monster again. He's been very good at going one for one here. That is fine. Shiro's here on the B site as well, so A is undefended, but spotted his Boomich and Simple tries to escape, but he is denied by Hobbit's position. Flamey can't do a thing, and there's 10 seconds again. Is the bomb really going to elude Na'Vi? Yes, it is. Nafani with the kills, and again, Gambit win with a clock on their side. Massive hole for Nafani, sure, but Na'Vi felt the need to plant. They don't have time to clear the corners and this slow style this late round play for Na'Vi it's letting them down yeah I mean honestly it feels like it's kind of always been the downfall of overpass for them right it is that these fakes never really come together the way you would hope they do and a lot of the time I see Na'Vi having rounds slip by the wayside it's in a fashion like that where you've got seven seconds the enemy team have the information you physically don't have time to switch a plan up on the fly or get in the head of Gambit at all you know there was no option to slow that down and reset in a round like that if you're Na'Vi if you go slow you lose and so now just pistols out for this Na'Vi T side. Gambit opening the round up in a five on four immediately as well. Really does lessen the impact that these Eagles are going to be able to have. 
Yeah, Hobbit's position as well. He's like towing the line between uh, aggression and, and information, right? He's playing towards short. He's tucked behind the sandbag. And that gives him the info that it's an A play. He calls to Naphany, like, yeah, they're, they're coming up. He kills Simple, trying to rotate up Connector. And even though he's not playing too aggressive and offering up that pick in water, he's still in a position where he can swing and get that information. So, yeah, Gambit when, uh, knew that was going to be an A take from the get-go. And now they're here ready and waiting again. Three CTs on the site. Shiro waiting. And Na'Vi with no nades to get anyone off angles. Oh dear, wall bangs are even coming in. There's no safety in this site. Shiro with a kill. Uh, Flamey gets one. But that's going to be all that Na'Vi can look at in that round. 12 to 10. And it was only pistols, right? We're waiting for the gun rounds of Na'Vi. And Simple lacking the orb in many of these rounds. Plus, I think it's important to realize, right, that when Na'Vi were, were like 6-2 up, Boomich was looking was looking great. He had those yeah. three triple kill rounds, putting up uh, up onto nine. Well, since then, he's had three. He's had three kills. So that's a bit of a rough one for old mate Boomich. He has been struggling. He's also been the guy a lot of the times uh, left in like these positions, spearheading the charge over towards A or trying to sell some kind of fake. Not an easy position to be in, but you need to make it work at least as good as Inters did. Over on the uh, the side of Na'Vi, money will allow a buy once again, but that's not what they're focused on here. You know, Gambit, they're starting to take the lead in this matchup from 6-2 in favor of Na'Vi to 12-10. Moving into crunch time, you know, you don't get many more second chances at this point. And no one knows that better than Na'Vi. Orp out on Shiro again, and a Krieg for Simple. We saw Simple with the AWP once, and that was in the round where Hobbit catches him rotating up through Connector. Other than that, we haven't actually seen it played. It has just been these rolling Kriegs. Yeah, what's worrying for Na'Vi is eight of their ten rounds have, have come off the back of the pistol, right? Or the, the pistols on both sides. Nice start for Electronic. Na'Vi, they, they lost a the pistol in the first half, but they won the force, and they go on a bit of a streak off the back of it. There were some gun rounds in there. They go up 5-2. And on the second half, well, they went 3-0 and to start this one off as well. So when it comes to the gun rounds, it's been Gambit more often than not. Na'Vi, though, throwing a fly in the ointment and finding the first electronic picks Hobbit in the same position as last round. Getting aggressive, though, this time will be his demise. And electronic has not moved his eyes from this position either. Oh, they've crept out. He's going to look back in, though. The orb's there, and that's a big trade for Gambit to get back into a four-on-four. -four. Boomich is out on long, and he hears Axel trying to retreat, who was tagged earlier on. Boomich can get that kill, and look at him speeding towards A. Will he call for a fake, or will he call for his team to join him on this fight? It doesn't matter, because Boomich might just have all the kills. Shiro finally trades, sending his team down lower. The orb is on A. Na'Vi are trying to avoid him, but Inters gets aggressive to do some damage. They're already out monster. Surely he can't escape, but they let him go. They let him drop into the pit, and now the orb can post up the kills. I uh, wish Shiro still alive. You know, Inters, he really needs to get one kill and set Shiro up for another clutch. There's the swing and Simple is quick to not let Shiro get away. You know what this guy's capable of if you even give him the tiniest bit of room. That's a Simple just shuts him out immediately. The fact that Shiro is also keeping up, like, in terms of just the overall frag tally, and then the fact that, you know, they've both been finding impact in different ways. For for Simple, it's been his ludicrous amount of openers in this game. You know, like, always being the man to try and create that space for Na'Vi. For Gambit, Shiro, as mentioned, great in these clutches. So you've got Simple on one side, who's been opening up a lot of these rounds, and Shiro on the other, who's been closing them out for Gambit. Yeah. And ultimately, it hasn't really mattered how strong Na'Vi have started. It's about how strong Gambit have finished with Shiro. This time only on to with the Eagle. So you imagine that 12th round is looming for Na'Vi. Sure. That, that is a good point in the sense of like Shiro keeping up in frags outside of clutches. Because if you think about it, two of the clutches he's won, he's not even had to get kills in. It's been the time or the bomb playing to his favor. Yeah, right now, Na'Vi is just not giving up. Every time they get the money back on, these anti-ecos have been very clean for Na'Vi. Not the best grenade thrown by Perfecto, but not a worry either. He knows his boost has been employed at time to time. Oh, through the mid smoke, but cover is there. Perfecto comes out connected. That was a flash thrown from B by Inter. So nice high flash to set Shiro up, but he's not good for the kill. I think he got a bit blinded by it as well. Even so, five on two. 
and almost nothing Navi can do wrong. Wherever they go, whatever they do, as long as they do it together, they should be absolutely fine and dandy. Smoke on eight. And I, they look aware of Axar's position. I don't know if his barrel's been sticking out. It's silent, so probably not. Boomich is now drawn into Inters. Will he check it? Yes, he does. Oh, it's a bit messy. And that's a gun given over. No one to trade on long. Na'Vi, 20 seconds. You can't mess this one up. You can't afford to mess this one up. But Axar's doing something with this AK, and he's tripled up on the site, finally getting hounded down. But that is far too uncomfortable in what was a 2v5 for Gambit with USPs, for crying out loud. Still around, nonetheless, for Na'Vi, but nothing comes free in this game. Something that is interesting is, uh, you know, in that first half, we mentioned how it felt like, uh, you know, Boomich and Electronic have, like, swapped things up. Uh, Chad actually went back and had a little look, and it turns out they've attempted this once more before in this tournament, right, versus Liquid. In that game, Electronic's performance suffered as a result of it, and he ended up being the lowest-rated player for Na'Vi. Well... Once again, he's currently sat bottom of the board. You're hoping that this T side is where we can get even more mileage out of Electronic. Yeah, at least in that game, the T side was the better of the two for Na'Vi. Not that, you know, they, they picked up the map, but able to get a nine round T side there. And considering how this game is exactly gone, that's, well, what Na'Vi need. And then some. In fact, exactly what they need with an 8-7 for Gambit, but... Again, back to the Krieg for simple out of choice. Not really been seeing him versus Shiro in these head-to-heads with AWPs, right? It has just been coming down to Shiro getting picks on the rest of his team. Set towards B early for Na'Vi. Bring the bomb back down lower. Three-man hold. But not for long. Nafani already peeling away. Does he re-decide to commit into B? And yes, he does. So Gambit have got the right stack right now. Boomich up on that top side again, but he doesn't have any more utility to fake. Oh, boy. Oh, Gambit are getting aggressive. I don't know. This this could be the decision that throws oh. it away. Flamey, they're right there. They're on the other side of the smoke, but somehow they've dealt with both players outside of Monster. That looked dead to rights going in favor of Na'Vi. Boomich has even picked up through the wall at long, and so Na'Vi were getting posted. They were getting ready to hit this B bomb site, and instead, Gambit beat them to the punch. It's a save immediately out of the round. You never even really got to play if you're Na'Vi. You walked to positions, you sat there, and then Gambit brought the fight to them. My, oh my, that is that is one hell of a way to find the lead for Gambit. You know, keeping five alive as well, even looking to hunt down some of these remaining players. Now, they're not going to get found. They're not going to get discovered. Regardless, five alive for Gambit. So much money getting made on the back of a round like that. And at the same time, the money of Na'Vi getting broken. You couldn't have asked for a better way to take the lead if you're Gambit. And on the back of such a ballsy call as well, that ends up paying dividends to Gambit. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like you said, look like Flamey had that one for sure, right? The smoke looked uh, right on the edge for him. He was looking into his opponent's eyes, but, you know, when you sit inside of a smoke, it often fades to your favor. So Gambit used that to their advantage. Simple was even throwing a flashbang for Flamey as the smoke faded, so he wasn't ready for a fight either. And, oh no. RV, not like this. Money bottomed out. They'll be eco if they lose this one. Up against 14 might even just have to be the force for Na'Vi unless they want to play for OT. Now do they actually get to play their round out of spawn? You can see how timid they are to begin. After uh, Na'Vi went, you know, 6-2 up, 5-2 up on CT, Gambit were playing similar to this, right? They were very, very passive, very methodical in middle, doing the same util, smoke toilets, molly to the divider to send back an AWP. So Na'Vi now know that Gambit could be continuing this aggression on the A side of the map, and they are very, very vigilant about those positions. Close on long is Axile. Umich might not be ready for a fight this close. You could jump spot it. But a big risk. Oh, that pole, there's the flash, and Umich now giving away his position. Axile gets the kill, and Na'Vi is speeding up into the stack. Yeah, this time trying to be explosive, trying to get a bit more oh. aggressive with it. And Electronic on the opener has at least given them a chance in a round like this. Nafani calling for these rotations, trying to get people into the right place. But with him alone facing at the truck, 
there's now a big gap over in this A side. The nade onto the bomb plant. It does great damage. Won't deny the plant. The tags have come through and simple out of the round now. It's a two versus two. Shiro and Inter are still standing at full HP for Gambit. And it's all on the line now for Na'Vi. If they want to keep this game going, if they don't want their money to get broken up against 14, they need this round now more than ever. Flamey delivers the first. And now Inter's left up alone to try and get it over the line. Flamey knows how important this round is, but he's given it all away. The long peak, handing that kill to Inters and giving him the 1v2, puts Gambit up to 14, breaks the money of Na'Vi. They're in a really rough oh. spot now. And that could have been the deciding round in this game. And Gambit pinching every penny, even going back to CT to grab the orb that Shiro dropped for the retake. And yeah, Flamey, there's not much you can do there, right? Intel's plays it perfectly, tapping the bomb and going round wide. Flamey wasn't even facing hard. He wasn't even swinging the plant. He just gets caught by an aggressive post-plant CT. The fear for you there, if you're Flamey, is you never know if Intel's is sticking that defuse. It's a risk, it's a gamble. And it's a game where one decision can change everything as Gambit steal back 14, taking the lead. And even with the bomb plant from Na'Vi, is that really going to incentivize them to full buy? It would be a huge risk to take. Many teams with 12 rounds in their pocket will want to play for overtime in this spot. But not Na'Vi. Na'Vi are willing to put their money where their mouth is. Is it going to pay off though? See, and I think, you know, coming into this second half, we, we highlighted Inters as like someone who was very, very important to the Gambit T side. Na'Vi just don't have anyone that's matching up to what he was able to get away with, right? Whenever Boomich has been left to try and sell these fakes, a lot of the times he just sits long toilets and then dies eventually. Oh, so this my. time they try and move away from the fake tactics. They try to keep things simple and they rush in towards B. It doesn't get much easier than this. In terms of having the strategy orchestrated, they don't manage to deal with Nafani down in the pit. And Inters is bailing them out as well. Now it's for time for Axile's short flank, and he gets away with the double. The round is locked in. And in spite of the openers coming through for Na'Vi, the response from Gambit was so damn fast. Players through the connector, not budging within that bomb site, just keeping Overwatch on one another all to buy time for that short flank from Axile. He was there the entire time, by the way. He gets flashed off and Na'Vi don't clear him. They just run into B and Axile comes out with a backstab. He makes the call, I'm letting them in. And Gambit just peel away. They don't give away the picks on the site. And then Axile can just backstab because the last thing that Na'Vi are expecting is the position they just ran through to be enemy territory. My oh my. Gambit. Up against another force, it's not pretty for Na'Vi to say the very least. Simple stuck on a deagle and Boomich with the one AK has been extremely quiet in the T side when it comes to the kills. And is there anything to rely on for Na'Vi? Is there anything they can look at and go, yeah, that, that will work. That will consistently work. Gambit have tried different things every round of flashing fast for a smoke it is unbelievably aggressive. Axel goes for one and he drops the AK, but that can just mean Simple's now armed. And another gun for Perfecto potentially as well. Simple's trying to scavenge what he can. <laughs> Give me the AK, mate. Yeah, cheers. Three rounds in a row for Na'Vi. And it's got to start here and now. Or never. And we go to Na'Vi's pick of train. Well, it's all come down to what's looking like just this short play into the A bomb site with a late long split from Electronic. 40 seconds as well. Time is once again going to become a problem here. Gambit maybe getting in their heads a little bit. Oh, Nafani will decide against the rotate. And the timing on that on that reconsideration is perfect because he's now here fighting alongside Shiro up at the A bomb site as the push is coming in. 20 seconds, they flush out Shiro and not a trade in sight. That bomb has got to go down. They plant it safe at the truck. Oh. The nade goes in and deals with Flamey, but that's not the bomb planter. 
So now B, they get away with that at least. Now they have to find the three on three and simple. He's just giving them a reason to get reinvested in this round. Out with the swing. Perfecto knows now that he has to fight tooth and nail to keep Na'Vi in this one. Electronic at the dice box gets spotted as well. And so the info is there for Gambit. Perfecto dealt with on truck and Electronic wide swang from the bank. It's the defuse in for Gambit. Another round going their way. And with that, this map gets snuck in by the Gambit squad. My, oh my, 16 to 12, and it's no contest in that second half of play. Gambit are looking fierce. Can Na'Vi pull it together moving on to train? You're gonna have to wait and see.